In late 1993, Prince turned in two albums to Warner Brothers, one being Come, which was credited to Prince, and the other being The Gold Experience, which was credited to his new name. Warner Brothers did not like Prince's plan of releasing these albums a week apart from each other, creating a competition for record sales between Prince and... Instead, they shelved the album and released the Black Album three months later. An album with a notorious backstory, as Prince had the album pulled vowing to never release it, and in turn creating one of the most bootleg albums of all time. In the meantime, to keep promoting his new record label, MPG Records, Prince released the MPG's second album, Exodus, on March 27, 1995. Warner Brothers did everything they could to make sure this album wasn't a success, including not letting it be released in America. On September 26, 1995, after being shelved for almost two years, The Gold Experience was released in the US and a day earlier in the UK. The album peaked at number six on the Billboard's Top 200, number two on the R&B charts, and number four in the UK, selling over 500,000 copies worldwide on its initial release. This was Prince's first full-length release under his new name. His name change alone created a whole bunch of publicity, which added to the promotion of this album. Three singles were released. The Most Beautiful Girl in the World, although it was released over a year prior to the album's release, the song peaked at number three on Billboard's Top 100 singles, number two on the R&B singles, and number one in the UK, selling over 500,000 copies as a single. I Hate You, which peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Top 100 singles, number three on the R&B charts, and number 20 in the UK, and Gold, which peaked at number 88 on the Billboard Top 100 singles, and number 10 in the UK. Both The Most Beautiful Girl in the World and I Hate You had EP releases, which include different remixes and variations of the songs. The songs Dolphin, Endorphin Machine, and Pea Control were released as promotional singles at different events. A 20-day tour overseas called The Ultimate Live Experience was attached to this project. Attendees of the Versace collection at Paris Fashion Week were given a cassette tape called The Versace Experience Prelude to Gold, which was actually a sampler of the album The Gold Experience to help further promote its upcoming release. Prince performed songs live at the VH1 Honors and even performed the song P Control at the VH1 Fashion Awards. VH1 really showed Prince a lot of love, letting him bookend this release with two TV specials, 1994's The Beautiful Experience and 1996's Love for One Another. Several videos were released for this project, The Most Beautiful Girl in the World, Endorphin Machine, Dolphin, I Hate You, Now, Gold, and gold singles B-side, Rock and Roll's Alive and Lives in Minneapolis. A video was filmed for P-Control, but it was never released. Your reputation and I'm astounded that you're here. I fear your the album has a very loose storyline of an unknown user logging onto their computer, searching through different musical experiences. So let's log in and experience. We open up with the song P Control where we get a short intro in Spanish letting us know that Prince is dead, followed with the declaration, long live the new power generation. Then P Control happens. Prince's cadence and flow as he rides this beat shows he has mastered this genre we call hip hop. The wordplay and metaphors would make the hardest MC nod their head in respect. We are deep in the evolution of hardcore hip hop by the time of this release. And Prince takes the same vulgarity that you hear on best-selling hip-hop albums of its time, giving you the illusion that he's talking the same narrative of negativity, but this is a tale of a young woman who keeps her focus on business and financial success, not letting bullies misguide her, 
or giving in to false promises for men that just want to take her off her path, as she always keeps control of her body. We do a full 180 on sound and slam headfirst into the hard rock genre. Prince gives us his greatest screams and a whole lot of them. And the melody structure changes from aggressive to silly and bouncy at times. Next, we get to hear Prince take back the song he gave Tevin Campbell, the song Shh. It's always weird saying that, that title, Shh, Shh, Shh. Anyways, the song's called Shh. And Michael B's drum solo that opens up this song may be the greatest drum solo I've ever heard on record. At minimum, it's the top five. And Prince takes the sexiness to 11 on his version. We March has some of the best vocal layering that Prince has done in years, giving a very unique sound to the song itself. It had been rumored for many years that the song was actually inspired by the Million Man March, but that event actually happened several months after the release of this album, although the song was played at that event. Then we have the song that started it all, The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. Now then, the version we get in this album is slightly different than what we got as a single, as on the album version there's live drums instead of drum programming, and there's a quite a bit of sound effects and samples added in the background to the song. In the song, Prince gives us every octave of his falsetto, and even dives into his lower registry hitting some very deep notes. This song ran into some controversy when songwriters Bruno Boganzi and Michelle Vecino claimed that Prince plagiarized their song, Taking Me to Paradise by Raynard J. from 1983. Although myself, personally, I can see the similarities, but they are extremely minor, and I don't see it being intentional on Prince's part. The estate would eventually settle for an undisclosed amount of money to the songwriters, and I really think they just did it to move on with it so they can go ahead and re-release the gold experience in its entirety. Which I don't blame them at all. But anytime someone claims that Prince stole a song from them or that song of Prince's they actually wrote and he just stole it from them, I always think of the story of Purple Rain as Purple Rain almost did not get released because Prince thought it sounded too much like Journey's song, Faithfully. And it actually took members of the group Journey telling him that no, it doesn't sound like our song for him to go ahead and finally release the song. That scenario alone makes me believe that Prince would never openly just steal somebody else's music. Dolphin is a song where Prince asks those who control him and openly ignore him that if he was to die and physically return as a dolphin, would they pay attention to him then, and would they care for him correctly? He predicted they would just simply cut off his fins and still make him perform in their arena against his will. And even so, he would rather die than be controlled. Now is hip-hop perfection, as we get to see Prince just killing it on this hard-hitting beat with all kinds of wordplay that's pure wizardry. He not only changes his cadence and flow throughout the song, but also vocally, he changes his pitch and does all kinds of different types of impressions. With the song erupting in the end with him screaming his way to the very end. Three Nineteen's narrative is an erotic adventure told from the viewpoint of a photographer who has requested, let's say, a professional to his room to strip and play as he records it with his camera. The song is infamous for its inclusion in the film Showgirls, starring Elizabeth Berkley. When she does her first performance on stage, this is the song that's playing. And even though the song was played during the film, it was actually not included in the soundtrack for the film. Shy, the cool dark skin and hot virgin white. 
Prince continues his storytelling with the song Shy. A poet, or maybe even a novelist, is looking for some inspiration and decides to pick up a young girl who is wandering the streets of LA. No regrets, no sorrow. I'm going back tomorrow, make sure he's dead. She tells him a story about how she had to kill someone in order to gain the respect if I don't, they'll call me a chicken. from her fellow gang members. He's not 100% sure if the story is true or not, but her alone is giving him the inspiration that he needs to continue to write. So he goes ahead and rides along the rest of the night with her as she may tell him more stories. Whether true or not, he doesn't really care, he just likes her being there. The next experience is Billy Jack Bitch, a song aimed at gossip journalist Cheryl Johnson of the Star Tribune. She wrote under the name CJ and on a regular basis would do reviews about Prince where she would say very hateful things about him personally and also give negative comments about his albums. He lets everyone know at the end of the song exactly who he's talking about by the very inventive line. CJ, we then experience I Hate You. A song where Prince confronts his unfaithful woman and turns it into a literal courtroom drama. Prince is conflicted as the reason that he hates her so much is because he loves her so much. The courtroom piece is the best part of the song, along with the surprise ending of a dirty guitar solo just popping up out of nowhere. Carmen Electra has mentioned over the years in a couple different interviews that this song is actually about her, as while she was briefly dating Prince at the time, she was also seeing another man on the side. Prince confronted her with this song as his way of letting her know how he felt about her. She said the song brought her to tears as she realized how much he truly loved her and how much she had messed up. She usually ends this tale when she tells it with, and then he sent me away on a plane to LA. After the computer server crashes and reboots to welcome us to the dawn, we get the epic conclusion of the album with the song Gold. Donnie Simpson had mentioned while introducing this video on the program Video Soul that this song was like a second Purple Rain. And I know that's saying a lot there, but I can kind of see what he's saying. I mean, the spiritual vibe, it's there. The never ending guitar solo, it's obviously there. And the slow ending with the crowd singing along, that's there too. The song warns us not to follow the flashy things of this world because they all mean nothing in the end. It's a very creative way of saying biblically, what is it for a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? At the end of the song, the narrator declares, you are now an official member of the new power generation. Welcome to the dawn. And every time I hear that, I get goosebumps still. And since we're talking about the gold experience, I have a very controversial comment to make about this album. And that is, this is my favorite Prince album. And I know that technically, musically, and lyrically, it's not his best work. I get that. But for whatever reason, I revisit this album all the time and it's the one I listen to the most. And for those playing at home and are curious, Graffiti Bridge and Batman, my other two that I play the most. Thank you for joining me on the channel. Please like and share this video as much as possible. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. I will see you on the next episode where I talk about the final album that came out of the Dawn Project. And until the next episode, I wish you heaven.